Hello and welcome to today's interview. Today's interview is with Ilya Kipnis. Ilya is a brilliant computer programmer and an expert on volatility. He has is a quant trader, falls in the category of quant trader, and um, a lot of what he does kind of goes over my head as far as programming goes, but what he does is that he writes systems and is a system trader. This means that he sort of writes a computer program which tells him when to trade uh, in certain ways. So, for example, um, he trades uh, the short VIX trade, but his program tells him when to get out of the way to avoid spikes and drawdowns. And in the most recent spike we had, his program actually avoided the drawdown. So, awesome, uh, proven in real market conditions. Uh, he's got a great future, so join me next with my interview of Ilya Kipnis. All right, we're live. All right. Welcome, Ilya. Um, thanks for uh, coming on uh, the show. Um, wow, what a what a uh, week we've had. I was looking at the uh, the e mini chart today, and it just it just looks like a huge like hatchet wound in the chart lately. It's like I, I wonder how we're going to get past this to the upside. Sometimes. Oh, um, just patience. Yeah. So patience, let the storm blow through. You don't go running in a thunderstorm. You stay inside and read books, watch movies, do whatever it is you do, and let the storm blow through. And and uh, when the best move is to do nothing, then do nothing. Well, that's a good point, because a lot of times in trading, the best move is to do nothing. And in this case, sometimes it means, I think, leaving some of the money on the sidelines for a second. <laughs> Oh, definitely, definitely. You you don't need to swing at every pitch. Now, um, I uh, I was reading through some of your uh, your quantitative uh, information. Um, when did you start becoming interested in uh, the VIX and volatility? Uh, several years ago, actually. I uh, I was just uh, reading about systems on C uh, Seeking Alpha. And I was looking for something that did better than tactical asset allocation and equities, which does well enough if you do it correctly. But at 10% a year, you're not going to really get anywhere in a short amount of time. So I came across this man named Harry Long, and he was talking about uh, structural arbitrage using short volatility instruments. I started replicating them. And another one of my readers eventually said, uh, I have something better for you. And so... Uh, I got started reading, uh, reading and uh, his emails and corresponding with him, and came across a prototype system that I did a little bit of investigation into. Published that in late 2014, and I've been interested ever since because the risk to reward metrics just seemed so much better than than the equity space, which is what we think of as the main driver of returns in most investment portfolios. Well, you know it's. Growing up with my, my parents invested in the stock market, they were, they're part of the, uh, the, the sort of buy and hold crowd. And that's what like traditionally investing has meant to people, at least in America, has been to just buy stuff and hold on to it forever. And the market kind of slowly goes up, and you, 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 but you take your hits in the meantime. Uh, things have become a little bit more sophisticated these days for a lot of people. But I think still the majority of people just sort of do this buy and hold thing. Uh, it's... It's uh, it can be frustrating to speak to them, but I guess as time goes by and the baby boomers uh, become less in the spotlight, things are things are, will change a little bit. Um, I noticed you have a a, a gaming background. Um, 
that that's probably pretty helpful in this sort of uh, pursuit. Oh, oh uh, as, as, as strange as it may sound to some people, yes, I think it's absolutely helpful. For example, there's a fund called uh, Landscape Capital Management, I believe, and one of the partners is John Finkel, uh, and he's one of the greatest Magic the Gathering players to have ever played. And the same skills actually apply in some cases, that you're dealing with incomplete information and you're talking about uh, non-deterministic payoffs and you're looking for edges and uh, lo laws of large numbers and trying to get statistical evidence that what you have is is good, that, w that your strategy is actually doing something correct as opposed to uh, simply uh, getting a lucky streak of randomness. And the, 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 the kinds of games I grew up playing uh, similarly uh, have, have also been about, about edges, incomplete information, repetition, and trying to grind out an, an edge. And some of, the, some of the best games today even, uh, such as Path of Exile, are about people posting, uh, this is what I did for 500 runs of this sort of trial. These are the statistics. And my educational background is engineering statistics. Uh, my gaming background is incomplete information. So quantitative trading, I think, is a very good mix of both. Yeah, sounds like it. Uh, did, you, did, you play, did you ever play Magic the Gathering? Uh, yes. Uh, I, I, I played Magic the Gathering growing up, and I play a similar game uh, today. Uh, so I've always been attracted to those types of strategies. Yeah, I just I just found, well, I didn't just find out about it, but I just kind of started getting into Magic myself in the last, actually, three or four months. And I know I'm kind of late to the party and everything, but I, I, I got a couple um, sort of simulator things just to kind of teach me how to go through a round of playing the game and how to um just the basics of um you know uh dropping my lands and um some some of the basic strategy and I, i've become fascinated with it and like i said i'm kind of late to the party i think but uh we've we found i think we found in magic also that uh, they have done the reverse they've taken computerized uh, simulation and sort of back engineered the uh the I guess they're called net decks now that are that will work the best. Uh, th one of the fascinating things about Magic for me is that uh, uh, the new cards uh, come out uh, every uh, few months, and everybody sort of has to adjust over time to to uh, if they're playing standard to the uh, the new cards that come out. It, it's a fascinating game for me, and, and very uh, uh, sort of complicated. Um, well, I have to admit that a lot of what I read of yours kind of goes completely over my head as I'm, I don't have a strong uh, programming background. So uh, it, it, you're going to have to go slow with me a little bit and take it easy on me. But um, um, from what I understand, um, you are um, trying to avoid some of the down moves uh, in the market. Right. Okay, so, right. so, so lay it out for me slowly so I can... I can understand okay, it. So the way the way I see it is that without employing leverage, the best you can do uh, on the upside is to have the upside of this of the instrument you hold. That is, if you're going to beat the spot uh, the S and P 500 with a trading system, and you're not allowed to use leverage, well, your upside only comes from holding the S and P 500. So how do you do better? Uh, that is by avoiding the drawdowns because that's that's how you, that's the only place you outperform is to is to av avoid losses while buy and holding the gains. Okay. So ultimately, you're trying to in a perfect world avoid every single down move and capture every single up move. Uh, obviously, it's nowhere close to that in reality. But the the goal of every trading system, absence of leverage is to avoid down moves is the way I see it. And um, by a trading system, what you mean is that um, you sort of set rules for a, a, a computer to trade the market? Is that, is that the Correct. way it works? Correct. Okay. Uh, I, I execute manually, but the, but, the rule is, but the rules are there to say, okay, when I tell you to buy something, you buy it. When I tell you to sell something, you sell it. And um, so what sort of rules do you put in your trading system? 
they're they're not uh very complicated and they make a lot of economic sense in my opinion but essentially it's found the foundation is the vxv over the vxmp ratio that we're talking about implied volatility contango and and essentially saying uh which way is the roll yield in the futures curve going and and how do we capture that and how do we best predict that uh whether whether it's in our favor and whether it will stay in our favor and uh that's the system i i first learned about that when the vxv vxmt is lower than a certain moving average that you want to that you want to buy xiv or being short vol and then when it's above its moving average you want to be in long vol and then i added some other makes sense rules such as i i want this to i, I want to make sure that this is in contango or in backwardation and and then i had some sort of and then later on i added a switch for xi xiv versus ziv and 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 some other rules of 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 that nature and essentially all of these rules go to one goal which is risk management how do i avoid the the big drawdowns and essentially just stay alive to to collect to collect the upside when it rolls around because if you looked at you know if anyone has ever looked at the five year chart of the VXX it over 5 years it goes uh like this so it's like a negative 99% uh loss in 5 years meaning actually I range, I can pull that up for people like right now. Uh, sure. Which one were you looking for? Uh, the five-year chart of the VXX. Okay, let's pull that up for people right now. So, um, can you see? Can you see the YouTube screen in front of you? Well, you uh, probably you probably don't need to because you know what it looks like anyways. But let's see, five-year chart. Just so people have it in front of them. I mean, you and I know what it looks like, but right, right. Um, so, uh, let's see. All right, just keep talking. I, I will. Uh, I'm gonna put it up as okay, we do it. So, so over the course of five years, you can see that VXX has lost the vast majority of its value, the, the, the absolute vast majority. So, intuition would say I want to be on the opposite side of that trade. Uh, VXX is going down, 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 down over five years, and so whatever is the opposite side of the VXX will probably make uh, a whole lot of money over five years, give or take. So what's the give or take? Uh, the the devil's in the details, and that sometimes VXX can spike very hard to the upside. For example, in 2008, if you were long VXX, you made around 300%. In 2011, it it gave you a huge amount of upside. So along its so-called hell ride to zero, there are there are times that it has huge spikes upward, meaning the other side has huge sides uh, downward. And when that happens, as happened on February 5th, uh, the people in short volatility will get absolutely destroyed. So the point of a trading system is to say, well, I want to collect that VXX, v on that VXX decay. I want to be on the other side of that VXX decay. And I want to avoid those nasty exceptions. So that that's basically what we're what we're talking about. That how do you collect the most of that decay, uh, be it by being on the other side, and how do you avoid or even profit from the, from the occasional spikes? Yeah, because it's a great you know a lot of people have found that it's been a great trade to be uh, essentially short gamma and uh, and uh, you know short volatility, but then uh, you know every five years or so you or however x amount of time comes by and you get this huge spike you can blow out all of your gains so uh and you were mentioning that your uh your system actually uh avoided this last spike is that correct yes, yes. so there there were there were warning signs uh and depending on how you were positioned whether they were months in advance to the point that uh my conservative system left november and december on the table uh at which point uh in my my subscribers on my, uh, 
for that are following my trades they were unhappy with my system in November so I created a more aggressive variant by putting in a risk override rule and that risk override rule even even that saw the coming storm several days in advance and was out by the end of January so to those that say nobody could see February 5th happening uh well Maybe people didn't imagine that we would have had an acceleration, also known as a termination event in XIV. Uh, but there were many systems uh, that, that said, uh, it's getting a bit hot in here. Uh, it's time to get to the sidelines uh, and we'll just let this uh, turbulence blow through. Well, indeed, we we did see several days with the, uh, the S&P up and the VIX up at the same time, which was... A a warning sign for a lot of people. So just sort of walk me through the few days ahead of the spike and ha how it works with your system. Did it, it uh, when you're not uh, fully uh, invested, so what are the uh, actual underlines that, that you use to, to uh, with your system? Okay, so I trade, um, well, I traded XIV, uh, and it's going to be SVXY going forward, ZIV, VXX, uh, and VXZ a, a little little bit. Uh, I'm I'm re I'm researching that to see if it actually improves uh, my system. Uh, the the amount of time it spends long volatility is so small that that the that it, it, it's hard to tell. Uh, but going in, in into February, that uh, I was essentially buy and hold in January. But because I have an XIV ZIV switch, uh, that that would tell me I think XIV is more favorable, or I think ZIV is is more favorable. I was in ZIV, so January cut me a little bit. Uh, I lost three percent. That's that's not nothing scary. Ended with like an eight percent drawdown. Again, that's just fully in the territory when it comes to volatility trading. And 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 then the Everything said off, out, sidelines, now. And so I said, okay, well, the system is saying uh, it's it's time to head to safety. And after a down month, that's fully understandable that that things are getting a little dicey. And again, when the best move is to do nothing, uh, do nothing. Like you're saying you're getting into, into magic right now. Well, sometimes you don't want to tap all your lands uh, to play one one more creature. Sometimes uh, you might want to play a smaller creature, leave up uh, two lands untapped, and say, "Do you want to uh, attack into me? I might I might be holding some sort of uh, an in, instant, an instant, yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. That that will ruin your day. So again, when the best move is to just uh, let go, pass the turn, and and have whatever happens happens. And as it turned out. The risk signals were absolutely correct that there were some very bad things uh, that happened in the short volatility space, and I saw them several days ahead of time. Well, that's 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 really awesome. It must have felt really great when you were on the sidelines for that that move. Uh, yeah. Um, I mean, uh, when that happened, I realized, okay, uh, this isn't just some sort of side project for me. This is the real deal. Uh, my trading system is for real. And when I read about certain fund managers like LJM Partners with their growth and preservation fund that was completely in short ball on the on the day, it, it, it's like I'm doing better than uh, some professionals out there. I might as well brand this no longer as my research hobby, but this is what I'm doing. Well, I think that that's that's going to become a huge sales pitch for your, uh, your your fund now because everybody would love to to avoid this. And I would think for the big fund managers who have you know a, a ton of resources at their disposal to try to figure out what to do, just having your system around, whether they employ it for you know their total decision making or not, would be a huge asset for them. Um, so when you're not invested, when it says, uh, I don't know, risk off or, or stay away, do you reallocate funds to bonds or to, is it just in some sort of money market accounts or how do you, how do you handle the money when it's just in cash? So, so uh, uh, I'm just in cash, mm -hmm. uh, because at any given point, the system can say, get back in and I don't want to be holding some sort of long trade, uh, 
you know, while, while that's going on, though, I, I should probably look into that because my system is, you know, 30% of the time, it's just flat. And so I'm thinking, is there some sort of trading system that can complement it that in, if instead of being in cash, I was in this other trading system until I got the signal again, it might, it might be interesting. Um, but as of this time, uh, all, all the back tests have been, uh, you're, I'm in cash, like here, here's the flat line. Uh, so I can see, yes, this is when my system told me to risk off, uh, but I should probably look into that. How, how long have you um, been trading the system in its current iteration uh, with okay. the current rules? Okay, so I published my prototype in late 2014, uh, which is the VXV VXMT system. Uh, another site, Volatility Made Simple, was tracking it for about a year before they stopped publishing statistics on trading systems, uh, possibly because that's when their system had a massive 65% uh, out-of-sample, historically large drawdown, and they didn't want to look bad compared to the other systems. You think that's why they did it, huh? <laughs> that's uh, a good it, guess. It could, be any, it could be any number of reasons. Uh, maybe maybe uh, the person just wants to stop updating the blog. But I kept following. I kept uh, keep kept track of my strategy for a while uh, after that point, and I started trading uh, my prototype in April 25th, 2017. Uh, I decided to try and diversify it with Vance Harwood's uh, uh, VIX VXV less than 0.9. That's when you should be short vol system, and I got badly burned in August by that. So I turned that off right at the August bottom. It, it slapped me with an 18% drawdown. And from after yeah. that point, I, I was able to make a breakthrough and, and uh, iterate a bit more on my prototype to augment my prototype into, into its current form. And that, that did really well until November when, when I left a bit too much money on the table. For for some of my subscribers liking, I launched a you know follow my trades on on Patreon you know for a fifty bucks a month uh, service, and uh, some of them said, uh, look, Contango was great, Roll Yield was great. Uh, why did we leave all this money on the table? Put an aggressive override there, and so that was essentially late November is when that iteration took place. And then for this latest vol up move, I said, I don't trust the long vol signal that I'm about to get because the economy isn't crashing and I want to be long vol only when uh, there's absolute blood in the streets. Think 2008, 2011 Euro crisis. So that one was, was fairly recent. Uh, and time will tell if that augmentate, if that latest augmentation iteration is worth it. Again, long vol, very small sample size, hard to tell. Uh, but it's it's been a process of iteration, and I think the the biggest breakthroughs uh, came in September and uh, and December of the, of this year. Uh, but my subscribers have been very happy, and and those that that saw me post my signals every day uh, said congratulations on. Uh, completely avoiding the apocalypse, just sidestepping it entirely, and and uh, hopefully there there are more iterations to to make uh, that will prove profitable. But I think the system is pretty close to as good as it's going to get uh, for this particular uh, foundation, uh, which is the VXV VXMT uh, ratio, and maybe there will be other systems uh, out there that diversify it. Well, let's um, let's define some terms just for some some people who are kind of new to this. Um, let's can you tell me what the v, uh, VXV actually is and what the VXMT actually is, and, and also just uh, discuss the difference between XIV and ZIV as far as uh, okay, ter okay. term. Okay, gladly, gladly. So I'm assuming everybody knows what the VIX is. Okay, so the VIX is the implied volatility for one month out. It's essentially the market saying, what do we expect the volatility in one month to be? VXV is three months. VXMT, six months. So we're looking a bit further out ahead, and that signal is a bit 
more stable than something like the VX, VI VIX over the VXV uh, because that, that's more short term. There's a lot of noise in the short ter shorter term. And that provides a smoother ride, essentially. So the VXV, VXMT, think about it in the same way as uh, Tony Cooper's paper, Easy Volatility, invest in the V ratio. That's the VIX over the VXV. Vance Harwood, again, had a post uh, tame short volatility with a simple ratio. So it's similar to that, it's, except it's looking further into the future. And the products, uh, the difference between XIV now, SVXY, XIV is terminating, is that it's a different spot on the futures curve. So to understand this, know that the CBOE, Chicago Board Options Exchange, it trades, it lists several different contracts, around eight, a little more sometimes, of VIX futures. They're long VIX futures bets, because you can't actually invest in the VIX. It's a calculation. It's not an actual instrument. So the CBOE has futures that allow people to try and make a bet on the direction of the VIX. Except because they're, they're futures, they have built in, they have some interesting mechanisms because of the, the fact that futures have expirations and exchange traded products don't. So because you need to have this perpetual uh, exchange traded product out of finite futures, you have this rebalancing roll yield. That's where the term roll yield comes from because uh, firms like Credit Suisse and Barclays have to rebalance every day. And so if there's contango, that rebalancing causes the VXX to lose a lot of money and causes XIV or ZIV or SVXY to make that money. So SVXY is rebalancing on the first two futures, M1, M2, or C1 and C2, contracts one, contracts two. So right now it's February and uh, we're, and the front month is February, the second month is March. That's about to go into, February is about to expire soon. Uh, and, ZIA, and ZIV is composed of uh, contracts four, five, six, and seven. So, on, so May, June, July, August. Is, is the current uh, iteration of ZIV rebalancing. So SVXY moves more. Uh, that, that's, what, that's the long story short that, that people should know that SVXY and VXX, they have bigger, bigger moves usually uh, and usually in the same direction as compo compared to ZIV and uh, VXZ. So ZIV and VXZ, uh, ZIV mainly, is essentially a way of saying, I think the environment is still good enough to be short ball, that there is still some premium worth picking up, that, that there's still upside and my expectation is, is positive. I might not make as much as XIV, but if I'm wrong, which I very well can be, that I'm not going to get absolutely burned. For example, in January, I was basically buy and hold ZIV. And that was just a down month that long vol was the place to be. But if you were on the opposite side of that, if you were in XIV or SVXY, you really got burned. You ended the, the month down 15%, uh, uh, down like 8%, I believe. And from the highs, you were in something like 15% drawdown, which again, not life-threatening not the end of the world but again it's it's not pleasant to to be in a 15 percent drawdown uh because whether it happens to you in one day such as may 17th of 2017 or it happens over the course of a month either oh my god i just lost 17 percent or oh my god my trading system was on the wrong side of this trade for a week two weeks a month uh, so in the context of trading that's what ZIV is. I want to collect the short ball premium, but I want to hedge my bets. Well, it really, I mean, the, the price movement we've seen in the last uh, week has really illustrated the differences between the two uh, perfectly, I would say. You see, oh, you know, you see one with, I, I'm just pulling up the ZIV graph here right now, but you see one, you see one with a, basically accelerated down to, to five bucks, whereas ZIV, 
you know, you took a huge hit, but you're still alive and you, you lost less than 50%. I see it trading at 65 right now. Um, so what about the re the real front end of the curve in products like Vmin? Um, is that something that uh, interests you moving forward as far as a system? I know it's, it's, it's much harder to uh, kind of uh, figure what's going to happen in, at the short end of the curve. Right. There's there's just a lot of get it right, get it wrong at, at the front of the curve. And ultimately, if your edge is over over the long term, you know, like when Ed Thorpe wrote Beat the Dealer, it's about playing thousands and thousands of hands. And if you're talking about trading hundreds and hundreds of days, then you don't just want to get constantly what uh, be, stu be stuck in short-term turbulence because – that that's just going to that's just going to hurt from a from a risk reward perspective. That that you don't want to be doing this and slightly going up. You want to be doing this. Uh, you want a, a, a lot less whipsaws along the route. Uh, so it, essentially, the question is, where is your expectation? Uh, because if if there is if there is a lot of 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 whipsaws. Uh, for no real edge, then don't don't bite on that particular instrument. I have not particularly looked into Vmin, but from my experience, that when you're near the front of the curve, you definitely have to be more correct than if you're further out. Because when you're further out, you can afford to be wrong more often and then make it up on a higher conviction bet later. If you're wrong in a higher conviction bet, that's going to hurt because... The only way to do that, to make that up, is to be correct in the higher conviction bet more in the future. Uh, I'm just going to pull up the term structure here real quick from uh, Vic Central. Um, Great site. Great. And, and we're, uh, I'm blocking you out for a second, I'm sorry. Um, we're in backwardation, obviously, right now. Right. Um, but uh, the, the, the question I wanted to ask you about is, the far out futures uh, that you're basing a lot uh, the the system on, they uh, can be very illiquid at times, and we see some weird uh, shapes during certain periods of time, and we see very low volume on uh, those futures. Uh, would would that sort of trip your system up a little bit, or does that does that? I wonder who is actually trading the paper that's far out in the VIX, and what the order flow is actually coming from. It, it, it's it's interesting to me. Well, uh, onto my experience, ZIV has has sufficient volume, and it's comprised of the four, five, six, and seven uh, contracts, which <laughs> have been trading for for years. Uh, that ever since two thousand uh, since two thousand six, there have been seven or eight uh, contracts trading daily. Uh, if you're talking about nine and ten. Then I deliberately cut my algorithm, my term structure algorithm, not to include those months, uh, because sometimes they're there, sometimes they're not. There might be some sort of signal there, uh, but it's 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 fleeting. I might look into that in the future, but uh, the ZIV uh, so far has had sufficient li liquidity. And according to a professional I've, I've spoken with, Stuart Barton, the portfolio manager for Invest in Vol, uh, which is an RIA, and and uh, one of the pe and he's one of the people that uh, worked on the original VXX at Barclays. Uh, he said that if push comes to shove, that uh, Credit Suisse can create additional shares of ZIV. Uh, to for for additional volume, if you know if my strategy were to become so large uh, that that it, it would need to to buy so many shares of ZIV, or I could try to look into the futures market, uh, the formal futures market itself. Uh, if, if again, if, if I'm going to be deploying you know tens of millions of dollars, I'm not there yet. Uh, on, uh, on the strategy, but I don't think capacity is going to become an issue in terms of uh, finding the product to trade during trading hours. And all my signals are before market close, 
So there's no during after hours trading session do X, Y, and Z. Uh, that I have a one day delay built in because there are reversion effects to, to some of my signals, which means I get yesterday's settles this morning and I have the whole day to, to enter a position. So again, I don't think this strategy is going to run into massive capacity constraints in the near future. Yeah, no, I wasn't, I wasn't suggesting that. I was just sort of, uh, just sort of wondering about the, uh, about how significant sometimes the structure can be farther out when there's not that much trading in the futures farther out. It's, the, the, the actual future structure does not have a large impact on my actual signal generating process. So I've written a, uh, a post on my site about this, that Contango M2, M2, M1 is an awful, awful uh, trading signal. Uh, if you said, oh, uh, M2, M1 is in Contango, so I should be short volatility, you would have gotten destroyed in 2007. Now, VXMT... The calculation does not go back that far. VXMT only starts the calculation January 7th of 2008. And I would be very intrigued if I could uh, find data for VXMT going back to 2006, because that's when I could replicate the uh, the, the VIX, uh, the ETNs, the ETPs for. But Contango, uh, if you just said, I want to be in XIV or now SVXY, when M2 is when M1 is, uh, when M2 is greater than M1, you'd have you would have had a 90% drawdown going into the greater financial crisis. Wow. Yeah, it's 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 a, it's an absolute mess. So what would be what would be a better for people that are trading, uh, let's say um, uh, SVXY or UVXY? What would be a, a better a better look? I was thinking like to just see how far spot is. Uh, below like a combination of different futures just to see what the opportunity is for like uh futures to fall towards spot like sure sure uh that's called the weighted roll yield actually which takes into account uh the weight on uh the front month and the weight on the second month and then how far above or below uh that is uh above the vix uh yeah yeah, so, something like that. Yeah, uh, I've I've played around with that. I, I I threw together a strategy on that, and I mean it's all right. Uh, it at least on the short vol end, on the long vol end, it's not. Uh, it, it it does not provide a good signal on on the long vol, or or maybe the system I put together doesn't have a good signal on the long vol. But the way I see it is that you you need to that if you if you have a a signal that's profitable on both sides of the trade, then that's a lot better than than leaving uh, a lot of money on the table because when the large economic event does happen, you want to be there. Uh, and it didn't succeed in doing that. And I think there may be potential there, uh, at least on the short ball end. It, but I don't think it's it's spectacular. But I think it could be solid. Um, what um, could you just kind of describe for a lot of people? There's some a lot of confusion over um, <clears throat> backwardation versus contango right now in the term structure, and uh, there there's been some sort of speculation online that like they're two sides of one mirror, sort of, and that like there's a possibility that we will stay in backwardation like from now onward or something like, like that things can flip around so we we just stay in perpetual backwardation i i think that's a pretty big misconception like what what would you see happening to the term structure moving forward over the next couple of months if we just sort of kind of slowly rally up will we go back into a contango situation i think so that there's a phrase, the past doesn't repeat itself, but it often rhymes. And so when you think about something like 2008, that, or, or if I 
or if I bring up a chart of the VXV VXMT ratio, that you have something like a massive spike in in, in 2008 that it broke 1.1, which it recently broke 1.1 again, but then over time it just washed out and got back to normal. Uh, the idea that we are going to be in perpetual backwardation just does not sit correctly with me because I think backwardation is very rare and usually uh, heralded by some sort of economic calamity, like there's a good reason for the curve to be in backwardation. Uh, so in this case, uh, I, I think what might have happened is that because there was a sell-off in the market, that the VIX spiked, and because the VIX spiked, the future spiked, and because the future spiked, that XIV had a termination event. Uh, some people are saying that it's the complete other way around, that all of a sudden XIV is having a termination event, which is why we had to sell off. I think that's a bit of a tail, the tail wagging the dog. And I don't think that a perpetual backwardation is, is sustainable, that history offers zero evidence uh, of that. And we're talking about the greater financial crisis when people thought this is it, the world is ending, uh, bailouts left and right, blood in the street, yada, yada. 2011, Euro crisis, again, uh, we spiked into backwardation. Uh, and again, it got back to, got back to normal. Uh, backwardation is not a steady state for the term structure. And I don't expect a, uh, backwardation to continue. And even recently, like I can tell you the last uh, several days of uh, uh, the, the VX, v, VXMT ratio. So if I just take the tail of the ratio the last 10 days that we see it, uh, that we, uh, we see it on February 1st, it was 0.93, February 2nd, 0.97, uh, February 5th, uh, 1.15. That was the day of you know, the apocalypse, And since then, 1.10, 1.06, 1.10 again, 1.08, and now it's down to 1.04. So as you can see, we're sort of holding that high coming down and the termination event is still fresh in people's minds. And moving forward as people uh, forget about it and realize hey, we're not in an economic calamity, there, we're not in a recession, we're not in a depression, unemployment is low, all the economic signs are saying things are peachy, things are good, uh, that you'll see regularity uh, return. And when it does, uh, that's when I think there's going to be money to be made again. So, so you're not of the opinion that, because uh, we've heard a lot, and which you indeed do hear every time there's a... Uh, a big move. The the party's over. We're in a new normal. Uh, the uh, no longer is the short vol trade uh, going to be an effective trade. Um, you know, we looked at some uh, of these charts showing years and years, and then a spike, and then back to years and years of people collecting premium, uh, and then uh, and but people are saying now, oh, it's all over. Uh, you know, we're going into, I mean, it's a separate question of whether we're going to a bear market or not, but, um, but there is hope for people shorting the VIX that the, uh, that this isn't all over and we're just, uh, there's gonna, never going to be money made again, shorting VIX. Well, I mean, you know, the, the usual four words, this time it's different. How many times have, have people been burned by that? I mean, if you, if you just, if you just look at history, like, well, when people were saying, oh my God, Bitcoin is going bananas. And I'm thinking... South Seas bubble, uh, it's going to come crashing down, and lo and behold, it came crashing down. Uh, history, while it doesn't repeat itself, it rhymes. Uh, there's nothing new under the sun. This is not a 2008 uh, event. Uh, you know, people are going to continue, you know, human beings are going to continue to be human beings. All the, the, finan all the financial markets are doing are trying to quantify what human beings are doing, and and offer a venue to make for people to make a bet on what human beings will do. I am so uh, to be humanity here has to not changed intrinsically, uh, you know, in the past 10 years. Uh, 
So when, when people rate. say, oh my god, this trade is completely rates. over, bring in well, sure, get out of the market, uh, leave more uh, premium to be collected for the rest of us, uh, I'll be happy to continue operating in this space, uh, just with the knowledge that every several years, there's going to be some sort of event that, you know, that moves the wealth from the people with very short uh, hindsights to the people that that look look over as much data as they can, look at the past 10 years and say, yes, this instrument usually makes money. Uh, over five years, VXX decays most of its value. But there will be times that you'll want to exercise prudence and that discretion is the better part of valor and to stay in the sidelines, ride out the occasional storm and then back to business. So do you have a, do you have a pretty big customer base at this time? Uh, when, when did you turn this sort of into a business? Did it just start out as sort of a intellectual pursuit and then slowly become uh, uh, something that you decided to uh, offer to other people? Or yes, did... yes, that's, that's exactly it. Because I started blogging in, uh, what was it, 2013? And then I published the system late 2014. I followed it for several years without putting money on it. And then I realized, well, the rubber where the rubber meets the road is to have a track record. Start trading a personal account and realized uh, that if it's working for me, it can work for other for others. So let me start a way to have others follow my trades purely on a voluntary subscription basis. That every day I give a signal and it's up to subscriber discretion to uh, to follow it or not. Uh, but uh, you know it's it's just you know am I, I'm trading this with my own money here. Follow along. Uh, you know, it, if you want, and a lot of people have been happy to do that. I've gotten plenty of emails saying you've made you've made me money. Thank you. Uh, and it's also a way for other people to keep me honest. That at the end of the day, that there is a written archive of the trades, uh, the the recommendations I made every day. That here's my position every day. You can follow it, and at the end of the day, uh, this is what it was. That I can't go back in time and say, oh, I had a bad day. Let me create a new backtest. Let me create a, you know, a, a, a new track record, uh, yada, you know, or new statistics, whatever it is. This is set in stone. Yeah, it's huge. This is huge for you. I right, mean, right. Yeah. So I don't have as many customers as I'd like. I have around uh, 45 subscribers right now. Uh, and clearly most of them are happy because there's, there's no lock-in period. It's it's just you subscribe for a month, uh, pay your fifty bucks, and and if you're happy, then you can subscribe for the next month. This isn't some sort of hedge fund that it's there in the contract that oh I can raise my gates and keep your money here for three years while collecting two percent of of whatever uh, assets under management I have. Uh, there there's there's none of that. Uh, you know, this isn't a hedge fund uh, uh, because that that's that's where a whole lot of lawyers are that, that you know that I you know are just uh, w way too expensive when you're actually executing with other people's uh, money. So I'm saying this is just my signal. I'm essentially selling a research product, uh, you know. And if you want to stop or you want to or you don't trust my recommendation, feel free to to execute differently. Uh, and yeah, and, and and so on. And and on top of that, I have a fund in Singapore uh, for whom I provide signals. They trade a million dollars of their own money on that. Uh, so it's 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 like Quantopian, if people are familiar with that. Uh, that this idea of this crowdfunded, you know, hedge fund that they out that they make allocations to individuals across the world trying to find however many uncorrelated return streams, all with positive expectation, positive skew, whatever it is. So oh, wow, that's that, interesting. That's where I am right now. Wow. Is, is, now, are other people in your family have been in the market, or are you the first? Uh, well, I, um, I, I'm trying to see if, if, if this is a system that I really want to recommend to, to people uh, you know, that are in the age group of uh, the, the parents of, of, of my friends, because, uh, you know, if, if they signed up with, you know, LJM Partners, for instance, uh, and, and they put their net worth there on February 5th, congratulations, you lost everything. Uh, so, it's, yeah, that's a, now would your system, um, would it, 
um, could you could you generate signals actually to go long vol at some point as opposed yes. to taking money out? Are there some people that want that sort of uh, that sort of service also? Like like when you get a certain ratio to actually go long. I mean, I know you're paying some decay. You're doing the opposite thing, but uh, yes, the, the the system has had vol signals in the past. Uh, it would have if I hadn't put in one more check. Uh, after the February 5th event. And ultimately I'm happy I did put in the check because there was the up, the ball up some percent day and then up 20%. But ever since then, it's just been coming down. And if if I only use uh, a, a backwardation in the term structure as, as the way to put on the signal, then the way people have to see going long ball is the moment you go long ball, you're saying, I'm going to be taking a 10% draw at, at the end of this trade. Because how do you know when the move is over without leaving money on the table? Well, it goes against you. And when it goes against you, it goes against you quickly. Uh, so in order to justify that move, well, let's see. Fleeman just declared bankruptcy and the S&P 500 is way, you know, way in the dumpster. Uh, then sure, I'm happy to take a 10, 20% drawdown at the tail end of a trade that I expect will make a hundred percent, you know, but we're not talking about that today. Uh, and yes, the system can can throw out a long vol trade, but the circumstances need to be extenuated. Uh, yeah. Intuitively, I think I want there to be an economic event. I want pe I want the news to say people are panicking everywhere. I want there. I want I want the the news saying you know people are losing their jobs. You know. Personally, no, I don't want people losing their jobs, but if I'm going to put on a long haul trade, I want to have a very good justification of putting on that long haul trade. Yeah, that's a great point. I mean, if you if you give signals for the long vol trade, it's, it's such a short term. It can be. Historically, it has been such a short term thing, a spike that to expect, uh, you know, just a casual a casual investor to to get in there. Take the signal, buy the thing, and then be there and make the decision when during the spike to get out of it is a it's a whole different ball game than uh, right. than what we're dealing with here, and it's a, it's it's more of a, a trader type thing than an investor type thing. Also, it seems. Sure. Um, yeah, you know, I, I realized that I didn't have the uh, the live stream public for like half of that time, so our discussion was. Uh, it, it it still was recorded and everything, but we didn't have the chance to, to have people ask questions. But I was able to fix it while you were uh, talking. I'm sorry if I appeared distracted for a second, but I wanted to uh, make sure that we were live if people want to ask sure, questions. It's, sure, it's fine. Just just put it on your uh, on your YouTube page or whatever it is, and uh, yeah, so they'll be able to I'll watch it on. To, yeah, I'll yeah. be happy to answer the questions in the comment section. Uh, um, and um, so like, so what do you yeah, see yeah. moving forward? Are you are you, um, do you think that maybe you'll get scooped up by like a huge hedge fund or something like that? Or do you, do you plan on staying as an individual? What would be the ideal situation for you in like five years well, from ultimately, now? Ultimately, ideally, I would like to get scooped up simply because I'm fairly young. Uh, and there are other people that know more than I do. For instance, if Invest in Vol, uh, the, the RIA managed by Stuart Barton and others were to say, Come work for us. We have something to teach you. I'd say in a heartbeat. Uh, it's it, it just I realize there are people that have been in the game longer than I have. They've seen more than I have. They know of other data sources that I do not. And while I think this strategy is good, I I I think there are other people that know other things, and I would absolutely love to learn from them. Uh, I've I've learned a lot from just writing my blog and having readers that are industry veterans chime in. But I think that if I were actually uh, collaborating with people every day that uh, have 20 years experience and are specialists in this field, that I could do even better than I do now. Well, it seems like you're making a great case for it. It's kind of like... Uh... It's kind of like when the those actors wrote Goodwill Hunting as a start into uh, Hollywood, uh, avoiding a huge major spike by writing a program that was able to predict it is a great way to uh, to show up on the financial world in a big way. That's that's a uh, really amazing and congratulations to you for for such an achievement. Um, well, I mean, 
like you don't get paid for the money you don't lose. <laughs> like you get paid for the money you make. I've read like some stories. Oh, this trader, you know, fifty cent just made you know a you know two hundred million dollars on the trade, even though he's bleeding for a whole you know for all of twenty seventeen. Or the company in Colorado that made eighty six hundred percent on on this one trade. Uh, Sure, they hit a home run, and you know what was the rest of, tr of their track record. Uh, uh, you know, if the news media would uh, publish a story about me that said this guy avoided the drawdown, well, yes, I did, and so did Stuart Barton at Invest in Vol, and uh, th and the strategists he works with, uh, they also avoided it, uh, and and I'm sure uh, many other system traders that we just don't know of. Uh, also saw this coming in their own way and, and were out of the market. And for those that had the guts to be in the market and were able to, to exit after a few days, uh, those people are, are, are the ones that will really, uh, the spotlight would, would really be interesting uh, to shine on. But let's see if they, if, they can, if they can keep that up. You know, broken clock is right twice a day. You know, do you, do you really have something or did you get uh, lucky once. I don't know. I think you're just being modest because, you know, there's a ton of people like the 50 cent guy and uh, there's guys like uh, uh, Chris Cole from Artemis uh, and other guys who have been saying that there's going to be an event. But the thing is with your system is that you've got the best of both worlds because you're collecting the decay most of the time. So it's like you, you're not just like uh, these guys that predict the event that were long the whole time, and then 50 Cent basically made back his money. I saw a chart this morning that he was down like about $200 million, and he made like $200 million on the move. Now, there's, of course, speculation on that, that that's just a hedge for some larger long-the-market portfolio, which is very likely. Right. Uh, right. But, and that's the, that's the purpose of, of yeah. long vol in most cases. Yeah. You know, like, I, th I think that, you know, having a good long vol system – is, you know, I don't want to call it the holy grail, but I think it's close because most of the most of the risk when you're talking about risk and reward in equity trading comes from those large drawdowns. If you have a system that can capitalize on those large drawdowns without giving up even more over time, if you have a profitable system that will capitalize on those large drawdowns and make you money and have it but be a system that is investable in and of itself. That is amazing. Uh, I haven't figured that out myself. I've tried uh, a few a few variations of my current short bias strategy and tried to make it a long bias strategy. And whenever I look at it, I'm thinking, okay, so you're just going to be losing a lot of money most of the time, and that the, and that for whatever you're going to make when when things spike, you're also going to induce other drawdowns that weren't there before. Uh, you know, in, in your system. So it's definitely not easy money. Uh, and that insurance policy, it's going to show up in your returns. And, you know, oh, yeah, no uh, doubt. Yeah, it's just part yeah. of it. Yeah. Uh, you know, and as, as far as modesty, well, I'm just saying there are, there are a lot of, there are individuals, I'm not sure how many, that have uh, been in this business for a long time. And, don't reinvent the wheel. Uh, learn what other people have done. Learn what other people have to teach. It's 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 something that uh, you know that that I would really like to do. That if a vol that if a vol specialist were to actually say come work for us, that it's something I would look you know very favorably on. Now, do you um do you trade uh, other stuff besides Vic stuff? Are you uh... so I have looked into it because I currently the answer is no, not with my own capital, simply because I think uh, that the risk reward is better in my vault system. And if I'm going to be if I'm going to be putting money somewhere that I'd rather put it in a in in a vehicle that is going to get me, you know, results quickly uh, because leverage is not easy. And with tactical asset allocation, which I've also written about for several years, to the point that some of my strategies are on allocate smartly, and other strategies, other strategies from other individuals who have, uh, 
you know, whose strategies I've coded on my blog are also on Allocate Smartly, uh, they're there. And I've uh, made a model portfolio that in an equity and fixed income and commodities market, last I checked, it was somewhere around 10% annualized return with a 5% drawdown, which is uh, pretty good yeah, uh, yeah. In, in, in this space. But when you're talking about 10% uh, returns per year, you really need a lot of leverage to, to juice that up. And uh, for and individual investors don't have an easy time with that. Yeah, it's, it's always interesting talking with, with quant guys because, you know, they're, they're always the smartest people in the room and they tend to uh, actually take into account a lot more probability than others do. Uh, what do you think of technical analysis? Do you think it's a... Uh, uh, do you think it's possible to to beat the markets using technical analysis? Uh, so by technical analysis, do you mean like support, resistance, head and shoulders? Yeah, like looking at a chart and then somehow, no, yeah, okay. Do not, do not do it. Absolutely do not. Human beings are great at finding patterns where there are absolutely none. Uh, basically the way I see it is quantitative analysis, backtesting, signal-based processes, those are formalized ways uh, of, of doing technical analysis. That's the correct way to do it, to say, uh, yes, I can objectively define uh, this pattern such, and I can define it so well that I can program it. And because I can program it, I can actually see what it would have done on these instruments. I don't need to assert anything. I just need to run the simulation and see what would happen. Now running simulations has its own issues that someone that's not scrupulous might might just run thousands upon thousands of back tests and say, look at this amazing back test, which is why they need a track record because back testing doesn't matter until you put live money on it. But technical analysis, ad hoc hand waving, looking at charts without writing the program without actually collecting the data, without actually uh, having some sort of quantifiable or quantified evidence that what you're doing actually works, that's nonsense. Anyone that claims that they can give you a, 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 a recommendation based on chart patterns or sell you a kit to look for support, resistance, whatever, run and run fast <laughs> and run far what about um what about uh macroeconomics and, and also the uh, uh politics right now um does this do, do you do you believe that uh politicians are having a, uh do, do you take into account what's happening politically in the u.s when you uh when you make trading decisions i know it's kind of a wide uh wide question so i Ideally, I'd like to. I just don't know how. It's a field called sentiment analysis uh, that you have people that have devoted their careers to it, uh, to, to try and parse thousands upon thousands of news articles every day, trying to understand uh, what are people, trying to quantify what people are feeling, thinking through the written word. That is a very difficult thing to do. Uh, I know that Renaissance Technologies, the most famous quant fund ever, hired a bunch of neuro, uh, neuro linguistic processing experts uh, a couple of decades ago uh, to work there, and uh, tr trying to make, you know, trying to put what's happening uh, through polit uh, through news articles about politics is is something that is very difficult and. If anyone can show that their work actually has good returns through that discipline, then people should talk to them and quickly, because I think that would probably be a, a, a very uncorrelated source of returns. And as Ray Dalio said, the holy grail, 15 uncorrelated return streams, it's not something I've been able to do. But as to, the, as to the question of whether or not politicians move the markets, yes, very much so. For example, my system was in the back test. Uh, I, didn't, I wasn't live trading then. But when Brexit happened, 
uh, the referendum vote, and nobody expect, and everyone thought, oh, uh, the millennials are going to carry the day. Britain's going to remain in the EU. Everything will be peachy. Well, not the case. If someone was short ball in that day, they got they got absolutely clocked. Uh, they got hit for I believe 50 percent, if I recall correctly. It, it was a huge drawdown if you were on the wrong side of that. Uh, so. And my strategy in the backtest, again, wasn't live trading then. This was on the tail end of a move which made 40%. But when Kim Jong-un decided to launch some missiles, uh, I was in XIV, and that was, well, minus 16% on the day. Oh, okay. Enjoy. Yeah. Uh, and uh, as someone that was in XIV on May 17th, 2017, because my system didn't have its current iteration, the current system would have been in ZIV, you know, that hurt. Uh, and that was uh, the James Comey uh, testimony right. day. Right, I remember so, that. Yeah. So again, uh, the reporter got it. The reporter got it wrong, right? And then we right. spiked. Yeah. Right, right. So again, politicians definitely move the markets. Uh, and in that case, you just hope that they don't do it too much. Uh, and that, and that if they do, that it's not going to be the end of the world, and that. It's not going to cause some massive event that's going to take months to recover from. For example, May 17th, if you were smart enough to say, you know what, this is a news event. Uh, all my all my uh, metrics say to stay in, which the guys I invest in all, they said, this is nonsense. Uh, we're going to make it back in the next couple of days. They did. Uh, I had to wait for another couple of months. Uh, but uh, again... The markets do move, and so long as the politicians don't make a complete mess of things, so long as uh, the guy with the bad comb over and the bad tan uh, doesn't launch a nuke, then, uh, you know, he's been in office for a year, and uh, the markets have been shrugging him off, and they continue to shrug him off. And, you know, let's just hope that uh, all his rants remain on Twitter, and that he doesn't do something incredibly stupid in the next three years, at which point we'll have somebody with a bit less drama uh, step in and, uh, you know. So you're, predict you're, not, you're not predicting a, uh, a, a second term for Donald Trump at this time? Uh, I do not know, but uh, certainly I hope not. Uh, one, because I, I just don't think he makes America look good internationally, but... Uh, I do think that the chances of him doing something, you know, that causes a major market move are a bit higher simply because, you know, I've been reading and there have been a lot of people that, that are saying, look, the guy's old. Uh, he, you know, he he's he's starting, you know, the, the fries and his Happy Meal are starting to become a bit stale. Uh, so... <laughs> So again, you know, he really needs to be checked by all the staff and they're doing a great job, you know, keep, you know, some of them at least, you know, uh, keeping him from doing something ridiculously drastic and to the public servants that, uh, that are keeping the country calm and the markets moving, uh, you know, thank you for your service, but let's hope that, uh, sanity gets restored, you know, in both the midterms and, uh, and, and 2020 because, uh, calm markets, calm economies, uh, people that aren't scared, uh, you know, they make it easier to collect the short ball premium. And, you know, that's ideally where I'd like to be. Uh, are, you, are you familiar with Blair Hall and Hall Trading? Yes, I've, 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 I've actually met him at our finance. I go every year and uh, sometimes he shows up. Great guy. Yeah, because, uh, you know, when, when I first started reading your uh, your uh, white paper and stuff, it was reminding me of his... Uh, of his uh, trading systems that he has now with his funds, where he basically like allocates, I think it's up to 200% long or short. I think it's maybe like the S and P and, and takes into account many different factors, but, but does it in a way that's like uh, systematic and organized to. Uh, uh, he, he wrote a paper on that. I never got around to replicating it because I think the data is just difficult for me to find. But I would love to see the, the, the source code there. And and actually, that white paper is now an ETF. It's HTUS, I believe the ticker is. Mm -hmm. So for those that really want to make a, a bet on Blair Hall, 
there you go. You know, but from having met him personally, you know, he's just a jovial and nice guy. Uh, it, yeah, it's interesting. He was uh, on the trading floor with, with me when I was in at the SIBO, and uh, he was basically upstairs by the time I got there, but he would come down and hang out every once in a while. Um, but I guess he started as a card counter in Vegas. Once again, you know, this is just a game we're playing, and people that like games like the stock market. He was he he liked blackjack, and he liked uh, that that book that you were talking about earlier by the guy who uh, beat the dealer. Yeah, beat Ed the Thorpe, dealer. Yeah, yeah, he is. Uh, you know, he's a Ed Thorpe uh, prodigy as well. So it all comes back to gamemanship, and this is just a big game we're playing, and and. The key is to to uh, to try to figure it out. Um, people get very emotional about things, and it's just it's kind of a waste of time getting emotional. I, uh, a lot of people, uh, you you sent me a a tweet saying that you know we survive. It's we try to survive to stay in the game, and that, that's what it's really all about with trading. And that sounds to people on the sidelines that sounds like hy hyperbole or or something like that. But the the reality is is that. So many people in the trading world don't survive. I mean, it's over 50%. And uh, it, this this place is just a revolving door. So uh, if you can find some sort of edge, then you, you're, uh, you, you know, you, you have at least a chance. And, right. uh, I mean, that, 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 that's why, that's why uh, I write systems. Because I remember one day that my system told me, hey, be, you know, be short ball. I was in ZIV that day, I believe. But Vic, but XIV, you know, spiked down 10% on the day and then wound up basically flat by the end. I forget which day that was. I could probably look look in my data, you know, uh, what was the open to the low. Uh, but there was one day that, 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 that I was showing people and, and, and they said, sell, sell, sell. You know, you don't want to lose any more money. And I said, no, my system is 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 telling me you know to to be in the market and I'll only sell at the end of the day. It's telling me you know get to the sidelines at the end of today, and so you know by the end of today, by the end of that day, it was oh hey guess what? Uh, following the system, uh, you know being a slave to the system, uh, just made me a bunch of money. Uh, well, yeah, you, you have to commit, don't you? And, and it's like right, it's like. Of course, during the uh, the extreme times is when it's the hardest to, to, to be committed to, to something. And, you know, for example, I, I've been committed to the, the short vol trade for uh, about six months now. And, yeah, at the top of at the top of spikes, every single person in every chat is saying, oh, it's a new paradigm. It's over. It's going way higher. Get on board. But, you know, there, there's no there's no friend. You know, trading is not a game of of uh, like it. A team all the time. It, it can be very individualistic. Of course, of course, if you're part of a, a, a of a trading group, you can work together as a team. But that's not been my experience. I've always, uh, even when part of a trading group, I was like in a pit alone with opposition. It it can be a lonely thing because your victories are yours and your losses are yours. It seems like. Sure. Um, sure. Well, well, listen, I I, I want to thank you for uh, coming on and explaining a little bit about about that system to me it's it's amazing how much there actually really is in that term structure and and how that's really the key to everything as far as volatility um and i guess that's that's partially due to the fact just that the vix doesn't really have an underlying it's it's you know it's based on a, a strip of of uh of put prices in the spx and uh and so the fact that it doesn't really have an underlying creates all these opportunities for us right right uh, yeah, uh, that, that uh, what I like is that there is this, you know, very intrinsic data stream to to these products. So you have things like the implied volatility term structure and the futures term structure. Uh, whereas, like with, you know, with the S and P five hundred, you know, you you'd have to try and find predictors for what five hundred individual companies and and try and make heads and tails of of that. Uh, and maybe, uh, but with a lot of with a lot of companies, like unless you're unless you're an insider, that you're you're just going uh, off of the past, uh, as opposed to this very specialized alternative uh, source of data. So when people say uh, we want to do research into alternative data, I, I think that's where a lot of the edge lies, and the volatility space is. I think a space where you have something else besides, well, what are the moving averages doing?
I mean, just because it's, yeah, because it's mean reverting, it's like if I was short, uh, like let's say some, I don't know, uh, internet tech stock or something, uh, the sky's the limit. It could go up to, you know, if UVXY was, uh, you know, Apple, it could go up to 40 and then just keep going and never coming back. But right. I know with a, a decaying leveraged VIX ETF that, that, Sooner or later, it might take three years, but sooner or later, it's coming back down through that $30 mark and go, heading back towards zero. And just having a, a little bit of a border and a, a constraint can can provide a framework to, to, to trade with that that's, uh, makes things a lot easier, it seems. Right, right. Though, though per, uh, on my own personal lens, I would not recommend people trying mean revert in the space because... If you get it right, you look like a genius. But if you're wrong, I remember there there was there was one person on Twitter that said, "Okay, this is the bottom, February fifth trading hours. This is the bottom for XIV. I'm reverting this. <laughs> All in on XIV, February fifth. Yeah. Congratulations. Well, so, it, it seems to have. Can, you know, we've been, of course, talking about like vol going up for a while because of spike. But to the downside, it has that constraint too. That like VIX, it really is not. You can feel pretty comfortable that it's not going to go to five. You know, if it gets right. towards ten, you can feel pretty comfortable that at ten you've got two to three dollars downside at maximum. You don't have ten dollars downside. So sure, these little things help. Hey, right. But, but but because of the decay present, that even if it stays at ten, that if you're long vol, well that that's what happened in 2017. Someone could have said, oh, you know, it's at record lows. You know, time to get long vol, and they would have gotten their clocks clean. Um, right. Well, the instruments the instruments available for you to trade the VIX don't st don't have a bottom, but the VIX itself does. <laughs> exactly. Least, yeah. Exactly. Like you, you can use that to your advantage, uh, but again, you know, don't try and call. Uh, and, and call the bottom, you know, uh, take, take, you know, take the, 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 I don't want to say the easy money, but take the safe money, you know, because when you try, when you try to go for the all or nothing trade, you know, that's, that's when it, it only takes one, uh, you know, going against you that, that you said that, that you're out. Well, I saw in one of your posts where you were saying, uh, Negative one plus one equals zero or something like that. You're illustrating exactly. that like the hundred percent all in is not. And and when you hear people post in these forums and message boards that they're all in or that they're sure of what's going to happen tomorrow, I just I just think that's silly because of course nobody can be sure what's going to happen and you shouldn't be all in on anything, especially some leverage product. Well, 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 well I mean, you know, like my my system says, you know, whatever you allocate to the strategy, in on this instrument. Uh, but again, I'm going for the safe, uh, you know, the, the safe money. And, uh, you know, it, it, I'd rather err on leaving some money on the table than trying to hit a grand slam, hit the 10 bagger, and then having that blow up spectacularly in my face. Because yeah. you can be a hero for however many trades and then have the next one go against you and you're done. Uh, but you could take uh, just a portion of some of those huge up moves. And so long as you don't get bit to the downside, so long as you don't get burned, that people will be happy because you you are making more per dollar in the volatility space than almost anywhere unless you were one of the people that, that were lucky enough to just go all in on Bitcoin at the start of 2017 and said, I've had enough, you know, at the, you know, at the new year. That's an amazing, that's an amazing phenomenon, isn't it? Bitcoin. Um, I mean, it was, it was euphoria in December and uh, November, December was total euphoria. Any, any one of those little altcoins you bought was euphoria. But I think a lot of people, uh, well, the, the actual people who were traders ahead of the Bitcoin phenomenon who, who had been traders a long time realized that this wasn't going to last, but it still hasn't sunk in for a lot of people that that little period of time is over. Right. I mean, you know, three words, South Seas Bubble. Uh, that there's a there's a YouTube uh, series by Extra Credits called Extra History that talks about the South Seas Bubble, uh, which breaks it down in, in, into a very understandable way. And Wait, know, what is the I South Seas Bubble? Bubble, sorry. 
What is that, the South Sea bubble? So, okay, so the South Seas Company was, uh, it, it, it was in the early 18th century. Uh, it, it was around the time Isaac Newton uh, lived. So, long story short, it was a company that, uh, that people want to get in on because they want to get on the ground floor, in on the ground floor of another company like the East India uh, Company, if you've studied your history. I'm familiar with that one, yep. Right, right. So, uh, ultimately, what it purported to do was to trade in the South Seas. Uh, which was uh, South America, Central America, but rather than send a whole fleet of ships to make profit, uh, profits, it could only send one ship. So there's a lot of hype generated about it and that, oh my God, it's, it's going to make all these profits and, and the rise of the, you know, like one, you know, one pound, you know, turned into five in very short order until, until you, uh, it was impossible to hype this any further, and then once people once people realized there was nothing there, it went down just as quickly. And Isaac Newton, you know, the guy that invented calculus, one of them, you know, uh, he he got greedy. He thought he thought, okay, this is just going to continue to go up, and he held all the way that you know through the fall, and oh, wow. he said, I can calculate the the motion of heavenly bodies, but not the madness of men. So, history lesson there. I look at, you know, I see Bitcoin and I'm thinking, South Seas bubble. Read your history, folks. Well, it's 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 amazing because, like, it really did create some true believers. And you couldn't, as for me as an aspiring YouTuber, I couldn't really even broach the subject because I would lose subscribers immediately as soon as I said anything negative about it. Because people were, were so rabid about it that they didn't want to hear anything. They didn't want to hear any critique whatsoever. Uh, and you could tell, like, I was fascinated because I could actually really identify with some of these people because I, I'd been, I'd done a trade before that had worked for me and I'd believed past belief that it was going to work again in another situation. And you couldn't tell me otherwise. And I thought I had the secret knowledge in my head and these guys had the secret knowledge they thought in their head that like, if I just stay long, it's going to go higher. It has in the past and it's going to again. And it, to be able to make that adjustment as a trader to say like, look, you know, thing, the situation's changed. I got to change too is, is, uh, I, I think like a real maturation for a lot of people as far as their trading, uh, abilities. <laughs> right. I mean, all I have to say is mind the history nah, that nah. Ultimate, ultimately when we're talking about backtesting, we're talking about, we never really have enough data because, uh, when, when you, when you're talking about, when you're talking about, what really just gives people the boot that's and says your career is done it's not oh you lost a little here you lost a little there it's here's the big drawdown you got hit by it you're done and of those big drawdowns those 2008s those 2011s in in the vol space your february 5th fives uh your even even your may 17s you know your uh th that was down 16 percent in a day you know how many of those? How many of those did you avoid? Do you have a system in place? Uh, can you systematically avoid these drawdowns? Because what, all it takes is one. You which was the big one? one? Which was the big one for you? Was it uh, was it August of 2015? Was that the biggest one you you experienced so far for a drawdown? Uh, for for trading, um, because I I I was you know iterating on my system you know as I traded it, so uh, I didn't. I didn't find out about uh, recent, I have my XIB and CIB switch on May 17th, so I was an XIB then. Got you know got plastered 17% to the base mm. and said, "Ouch, that hurts." But I still trusted my system. That trust was rewarded. Uh, then, then I decided, hey, I want to diversify and trade another system because you know because the backtest shows that this reduces drawdowns, and that system was just completely short ball. August 2017. You know, when you see another system that that you traded, uh, and it's not yours. It's another system you picked up to try and diversify, and it just hit historical drawdown in a week. You turn that off. Yeah, only definitely. After suffering those drawdowns, uh, so that was embarrassing. Um, but again, you got to get that. Got to get burned to learn, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so, it, so you know, you pay your tuition, just don't pay too much. 
Yeah. I, I, you know, again, it's it's always, you know, the move around the corner, you know. Uh, I don't want to proclaim myself a genius because there might be something that somebody like Stuart Barton that invests in ball sees that I don't. And one day it's going to peg me, you know, for 30% down in a day. I hope that doesn't happen. Uh, but again, there's always more to learn. Uh, and, you know, stay humble because those that think uh, it, that they're a genius and that it's different this time and only have a, a short look back and things that, that you're going to see that, that, that when someone that's a bit more conservative is on the sidelines and they see that huge event and they see those stories about how someone lost $4 million and three years worth of work, or they see the screenshot of somebody's Robin Hood account down 150% because they went all in on margin. And, 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 and you're going to say, well, you didn't learn from history. You know, you, you look at a 10 year chart, you know, you replicate XIV back to 2008, 2006, and you look at that and you see the 90% drawdowns and you say, this is why we're modest. This is why we, uh, we leave money on the table, why we have risk management because at the end of the day, uh, if you're on the wrong side of one of those huge drawdowns, uh, no one in their right mind will say, yes, I can sit through a 90% drawdown. People aren't going to sit through a 50% drawdown, and even 30% is, is you know, starting to, to get concerning. I, because even when you're talking about systems that can make 80% a year, if you see a 30% drawdown over the course of a week or a month, uh, you start to think, is this it? Did I overfit the system? Uh, is there some sort of flaw? Do I need to shut it down because it's not performing how I thought it would? Uh, so, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll always stay humble and always, you know, respect history because the moment somebody doesn't, you know, that's, that's when they're going to be the poster child of what not to do. <laughs> um, I, I, I began this conversation by saying that I, don't really understand much about programming and whatnot. What would you suggest for me uh, as a, a way to start learning about programming and maybe take, take a class? Data camp. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I came across that recently. Which, uh, which language would you, would you suggest? I was kind of looking at Python, but I, I don't. What would you suggest so to Python start? Python is definitely more popular. And if I was as good in Python as I would be in R, I'd. I'd probably be, you know, have offers off the hook, but since I'm an R specialist, uh, you know, not not so much. But uh, R definitely has the better financial infrastructure, in my opinion. Uh, not because Wes McKinney, of formerly of AQR now of Two Sigma, isn't an all-star. He is. It's just that uh, R has its own equivalence to Wes McKinney that have put in uh, decades of man years into developing. Uh, some very sophisticated libraries such as XDS Zoo, Performance Analytics, Quantstrat. So uh, I build my strategy on top of some of those libraries. And I've even taught a course on Quantstrat, uh, but my system wasn't developed uh, with the Quantstrat library itself. So how would I, uh, how long would it take me to get started in a programming language? Uh, I just go to Datacam and start taking classes? Uh, yeah. Yes. So getting started is one thing because I've tried the Py some of the Python tracks and it hasn't stuck. Uh, but uh, for finance, Data Camp has uh, a track in all our courses, and then you take the R in finance. And he starts the background that you are able to. Uh, to read the code in my blog. Uh, I could probably do a better job commenting uh, the code, but uh, the way I try and write my code is is in a style that I learned from uh, Code Complete, that if anyone's getting into programming, read that book, uh, because I looked at my code from before I read that book and it was a mess uh, compared to my code now. What's it called so, again? Code Complete. Code complete. All right. Code complete. I'm going to put it up on the uh, screen here. So absolute must read for anyone that writes code. And then go to Data Camp and start by taking some, some classes in whichever language uh, you want. 
Uh, but know that R has the finance track, and R has a uh, an annual finance conference every year in Chicago, uh, somewhere between the middle of May and early June. This year, it's June 1st. Uh, and uh, the talk I submitted as a candidate, you know, for consideration is a primer on volatility trading. Uh, so oh, cool. uh, if I get selected to give a talk, uh, which I probably will, at least a, a five minute talk, uh, crossing my fingers, nice. uh, that I'll be talking about, you know, exactly what I was talking about right now. Uh, not as free form, I'll have a presentation, but uh, if you want to have a language that's tailor built for financial analysis, that's R. If you want a language that's more popular but is worse at it, that's Python. Uh, and if you want to go to a conference that's that has a lot of R users, though it's a bit more mathy at most points, then come to Chicago, uh, come to R Finance, and uh, yeah. Yeah, someone in the chat is saying. Uh, Plural site is a good resource as well. Plural site? Yeah, I'm not. I'm not familiar with it. Not familiar. Until. Yeah. Um, great. Well, um, I've certainly gained a lot of information from this. I, I, uh, I didn't. It, it was hard for me to like read the programming language in, uh, in some of the resources you gave to me because I'm just not a programmer type. But you definitely cleared up it, uh, how your uh, system sort of works with the. Um, and uh, that's awesome. And uh, congratulations to you on the uh, avoiding the big uh, downturn. And uh, you're obviously a very smart person. And I, I'm sure you're going to get picked up by a huge firm really soon. Yes. Crossing my fingers. And in the meantime, we'll we'll make a little bit of money on decay as uh, the the term structure comes back into line. Very right. Hope. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. And I will provide what sort of resources shall I provide uh, the guests? I'll, I'll link them to your um, okay your, your pages. So, okay. Right. So, Quantrack Trader at WordPress is my blog. That's where I publish a bunch of open source code. That's essentially my portfolio. Uh, some people have GitHub's. I have my my portfolio. Uh, which is quantstartrader.wordpress.com. Uh, to follow, to subscribe, to follow my trades, that's patreon.com slash quantstrattrader, same as my blog. Uh, and my uh, course for uh, financial trading with R, that's on Datacamp. Uh, you can Google that. Uh, a lot of pre it has a bunch of prerequisites though. So don't just jump in, uh, take an introduction to R course first then get situated with XTS and Zoo. Uh, and, and then uh, you can probably take, take my course. It'll teach you how to create a mean reversion strategy uh, that's conditional on, on, on a trend, uh, which really demonstrates you know, the 80-20 of quants, right? You know, how do you create a signal-based trading system? And uh, that's that's essentially the you know the long and short of it. I have a couple of packages in R that I haven't updated in a while, uh, just because I've I've just been working on creating these backtests. So. so if somebody wants to take advantage of your your trading system, how how does that work? Do they pay a subscription fee per month or something like that? Yes. Or, yes. Uh, and that's through that, Patreon. That, yeah, that, that they can subscribe for one month, and I just post a signal, you know, aggressive, you know flat, conservative flat, or if aggressive isn't uh, ZIV and conservative is flat, I'll say, well, what's my position? You know, it'll usually, it'll usually be in the aggressive system. And that sort of goes like, that's like once a day you, you publish right, that? Right, okay. right. Like there's no high frequency trading. There's no latency sensitivity. Uh, none of that. It's, uh, here's a signal. You have all day to, to get into it. Uh, the back test has been market on close or near there. So just you know, once a day around 10 a.m. Eastern time, because that's when the CBOE publishes uh, the previous day's statistics. Uh, I'll just make a quick post, and and again, uh, subscribers can can override uh, the the recommendation. I don't recommend they override it, uh, but again, you know, no lockups, no no fees, you know, n no no you know no no dedication. Uh, just, you know, like on, on a $20,000 account that comes out, out to 3% a, a year, 
and you know the the average you know return on on the system you know in a good year uh like e even in the bad years it, it's been around you know 15 percent uh in, in a good year you know sky's the limit uh you know i don't i don't want to talk really talk my own book uh because again you know i'm i'm learning as i'm going along and i'm being you know very conservative uh Oops. but you know, for those that just want want to follow my trading, you know, it's not formal investment advice. It's just, you know, here's my research. Here, here's my signal. Uh, you know, like n I am not a lawyer, so I don't know, you know, what kind of, you know, what are the exact stipulations. But a a as some people on the internet have said, you know, there there's so many thousands of pages of legalese that any one of us is breaking the law at at any given time. Of course. Uh, <laughs> And, you know, uh, I try to be as honest and, and as transparent as possible. It's why I write a blog. It's why I share my code uh, so that people take at, you know, so it's as little as, uh, of take my word for it as possible. You know, understandably, I can't give away, you know, the actual code behind my trading strategy. Uh, but, you know, I, like even even the prototype, the foundation of the strategy is uh, published uh, on my blog. So just look up VXV, VXMT trading system, and you'll see volatility made simple link, links to that. That's the post. So if you just want, you know, the free sample, there it is. If you want, you know, my, you know, the iterations I've made, it's, it's not too expensive. Like, uh, you know, volatility made simple himself, you know, charge uh, fifty dollars a month for his strategy. He had a historically large drawdown, and I said, you know, I think that's a decent price point because I think I'm doing a little better than that in terms of uh, keeping people from, you know, losing so much of their capital. Awesome. Well, thanks so much. I've learned a ton today, and I really appreciate you stopping by to explain all this stuff to us. Uh, and uh, good luck in the future. And. Thank you so much. We'll see you all next time. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a great day.